Hello everyone. Welcome to this introduction to policy evaluation. Policy evaluation is an activity that can be conducted by many different stakeholders, such as policymakers, NGOs and academics. The goal is the same. Assessing whether, to what extent, why and how a certain policy has achieved its objectives. To situate policy evaluation in the broader field of policy analysis, let's first have a look at the policy cycle. The policy cycle is a heuristics that helps us understand the life cycle of a policy. It describes the way in which an issue develops from an initial idea into a policy and how the implementation and evaluation of this policy leads to new policy ideas. The cycle starts with the agenda setting phase, where the priority issues for policy making are defined. The second phase is called the policy shaping or the policy formulation phase. In this phase, the agenda items are developed into policy proposals. Many actors leave their mark in this phase, since various stakeholders and experts help formulate a concrete policy proposal. Then there is the decision-making phase, in which laws or other policy measures are adopted by parliaments and governments. In the implementation phase, the policy is put into practice. After the implementation of a policy, the policy evaluation phase will determine whether the policy has achieved its objectives. If this is not the case, this issue can again reach the agenda setting phase and the policy cycle starts again. In reality, the different steps of the policy cycle are not as clearly delineated as shown graphically. Often, the agenda setting and the policy formulation phase are hard to distinguish. And also, decision making and implementation can sometimes overlap. The academic field of policy analysis covers any of the stages of the policy cycle. It can be described as the analysis of the nature, causes and effects of a policy. And it answers questions such as how was a policy adopted, why was a certain policy design adopted and what effects did a certain policy have. Let's now focus on policy evaluation. Policy evaluation is one of the stages of the policy cycle, but it is also a strand of academic research. The objective of policy evaluation is to determine the effectiveness and efficiency of a policy. Effectiveness means that we analyze whether and to what extent a policy has generated the effects that it aims to achieve, while efficiency is about achieving the results with the lowest input. This can be financial input, but also other efforts. And this links very much to cost-benefit analysis. The ultimate aim of most policy evaluations is to improve policy. Policy evaluation is about whether or not a policy has produced the intended results. But it goes further than that. Policy evaluation is about assessing the impacts of a policy. It tries to uncover how and why a policy has produced the intended results. It is about establishing causality instead of correlation. One example are the 2020 greenhouse gas emissions that dropped significantly. The reduction of greenhouse gas emissions is also subject to a number of policies that aim to mitigate climate change. So if we now only observed the 2020 emissions reductions, we could conclude that our climate policies are tremendously effective. Yet if we analyze the causal links, 
we would quickly realize that the COVID-19 crisis and its consequences caused many of the emission reductions. We can summarize policy evaluation as the purposeful, systematic and thorough collection and analysis of information to document the effectiveness and impact of a policy. When analyzing a policy's effectiveness in a systematic manner, three aspects can be differentiated. Output, outcome and impact. Output analyzes the laws, regulations and infrastructure that were adopted. Outcome analyzes changes in actors' behavior as a result of the output. And impact looks at whether or not and to what extent the problem has been solved. One strand of policy evaluation is called theory-based evaluation. And it unfolds in three steps. First, the researcher needs to establish a so-called intervention theory. This is a theoretical assumption of how the policy could have triggered the impact. This can be a set of hypotheses or the detailed description of a causal mechanism. Once we have established detailed assumptions of how exactly a certain policy leads to a certain impact, we need to collect and then analyze the data to investigate whether our intervention theory actually unfolded and whether or whether something else caused the observed impact. A method called process tracing can be very useful when developing an intervention theory, since this is about analyzing causal mechanisms. Developing the theoretical assumptions of a causal mechanism and operationalizing it for a policy evaluation means that we start at the policy level and then we specify what impact it should generate. Policies often mention broad goals in their text, but sometimes those goals need to be specified or deduced from the text because they're not mentioned specifically or specifically enough. Then we need to establish observable manifestations, which means that we detail very specifically how we can observe the respective element. If we analyze a law, this is quite straightforward. But if we look at another policy that is mentioned in numerous documents or not written down, we need to specify what exactly we analyze. We need to do the same for the specified impact. This can be more difficult in some cases than in others, but it is crucial that we define how we know that the impact has been achieved. This is about what kind of data and other observations we need to, we need to be able to say that the impact has occurred. Once the beginning and the end of the process have been speci specified, we can think about the intermediate steps through which the impact actually is triggered. In most cases, a sequence of individual steps needs, needs to occur for a policy to achieve its impact. For example, a carbon tax makes products or services with a high climate impact more expensive. This then leads to changes in consumer demand which leads to investment decisions by companies in low carbon technology. And this ultimately reduces greenhouse gas emissions and mitigates climate change. To know whether a carbon tax really has led to emission reductions and climate mitigation, we need to investigate whether each of these steps occurred and caused the next one. After identifying all the intermediate steps, we need to specify the observable manifestations of each of them so that we can actually know how to test them. This means that if we conduct a theory-based evaluation through process tracing, we need to follow the following steps. 
First, we establish the intervention theory, which then is transformed into a causal mechanism. Based on this, all observable manifestations need to be determined. This then tells us what data we need to collect. And then we need to analyze this data by tracing the process. There's not one method of data collection or end analysis in process tracing and policy evaluation. This very much depends on the policy, your assumption, and on the operationalization, which basically are the observable manifestations. Data can be collected through various means, including policy documents, observations from certain facts, surveys, and interviews. But this certainly is not an exclusive list. This data can also be analyzed in multiple ways. It can include qualitative and quantitative methods. And you can evaluate a policy in one case, for example, one country, or compare a number of policies or countries. Policy evaluation is crucial for learning from success and failure so as to improve our policies. It is, however, not an easy task. Conducting a thorough policy evaluation that establishes the causal link between a policy and its impact can be very complex and requires various kinds of data and types of data analysis. But it is a very rewarding and useful task, since without knowing how to better design our policies, we will not be able to solve the complex challenges that we face today.